It's something about someone. Pickle! Yes, goodness. Hit the arrow timer time. <laughs> Monday morning fallout. Of course, when we overreact to the football weekend, plenty <laughs> react to this weekend. We almost plenty. had Hill Doggo start going after that. <laughs> plenty. <to laughs> Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, rivalries mean more. So it's hard to kind of draw an overarching, I think, like theme to week six of the Texas high school football rank, uh, you know, world. But one thing I do think is interesting is that we had a lot of rivalry games that went on this past week, and we, we talked about it, a lot of them in, in the picks video, a lot of them just over the course of, of doing the um, just talking Texas high school football um, heading into the year. We're heading into the week. But the one thing that I do think is interesting is that when you take a look at each of the big rivalry games across the state, I thought that they told us a lot more. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to say that Lubbock Coronado and Lubbock Cooper is a rivalry game. Maybe it is. I don't think I don't necessarily think of that as like, oh, big rivalry. It's just two teams in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Coronado's twenty-eight nothing win over Cooper is really telling, mm -hmm. and a team that and, and and something that tells me it's like Love Coronado when they can play defense like that is going to be an extreme problem. That's an example of, of a rivalry game. Denton Ryan Denton Geyer is decidedly a rivalry game, and it told us a lot. It told us that Denton Ryan is pound for pound the best team in the state. Pretty stinking good. I mean, right now. Looking, looking the part. I mean, they look fantastic with their win over Geyer. If you want to call Carthage and Pleasant Grove a rivalry game, it's kind of butted a little bit. They played a couple the past couple of years, but Carthage's second half demolition mm -hmm. of Pleasant Grove, I think, it, it tells you more than just oh, they won a quote unquote rivalry game. Um, Didn't the Battle of the Bell? Battle of the Bell. Cam uh, Rockdale's win over Cameron yeah. Yo, I think, shows us that yeah, Rockdale's on the way. On you know, yeah, they, they lost a couple of games, but they're on the come up, mm -hmm. and that they're they're you know doing things in, in a bigger way. I thought that uh, Tyler Legacy's win over Tyler. Yeah. Right. Tyler Legacy, uh, former Tyler Lee, is off to a two and zero start and looking great, looking really really strong, and suddenly a team that we think has a chance to make some noise. That's a game that I think. It's certainly the Crosstown Showdown in Abilene was a rivalry game. Mm -hmm. And I thought Cooper's win over Abilene tells us that, yeah, the Cougs are, are serious. You know, that was one thing that I thought was was particularly interesting. And then, by the way, Longview's bounce back went over Marshall. Right? I thought, I thought that there was a lot of opportunity for us to find out some very bad things about Longview if they go out there and just lay an egg against Marshall. Instead, they roared out and, and made it look like week one was an aberration. That's my thought, is that we learned a lot from rivalry games beyond who won the rivalry game. Mm -hmm. Like, we just got to see a little bit more and get better. We got to have a better kind of grasp on who these teams are, uh, not only because of who they won and who won the game. And, and yeah, that, of course, matters in those particular towns, but also the just the, the sense that now we have a little bit better feel for those teams. Mm -hmm. That's thought number one. Thought number two, CFP goes poof. God, is that so, not right? So here's a fun fact. I have worked here at Dave Campbell's Sexist Football since 2011. 2011. My first magazine was when we put Jonathan Gray and Cyrus Gray on the cover in 2011. Okay? That was my first cover. Mm -hmm. And we have never had a team play for a national title. We didn't have it in the end of the BCS era. We didn't have it. We haven't had it yet in the college football playoff era. And so this is my 10th season covering college football in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And for the 10th consecutive year, we won't be covering a national contender. No. Because it all ended this week. It, really it is did. October 5th, and we can say that a team from the state of Texas will not play for the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. And I know there are going to be SMU fans who are out there hollering, Hey, what about us? We're 4-0. If you think that the college football playoff committee is going to let SMU into the playoff, I have some, I have something they to couldn't sell even, you. They don't even have, since it started, like, they haven't really let a big 12 team. I mean, they, I am, oh, I, other than Oklahoma, I am, that's and, it. And, and here's the thing. I, I, I love, I, I, I of course, am, am rooting for 
SMU to get into the playoff. I'm rooting for Houston whenever they start playing mm-hmm. to get into the playoff, right? But I all, am also realistic that they're not going to let a team no. like that, and especially like that, like because it's a political thing. It's not because SMU is not good enough. It's because it's a political thing. They're not going to get in the playoff, and as a result, Texas's loss mm-hmm. to TCU eliminates them from playoff contention. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, wait, what if they just run the one, run the table the rest of the way? Who is going to be a quality win for them? Who is going to be a quality win right, for them the rest of the way? it would have been Oklahoma, but they are dog poop right now. Yes. Oklahoma's 0-2 in conference. Yeah. So that's going to be a quality win? Is your quality win going to be Oklahoma State? No. Texas is done. A&M goes to Alabama, and they get blown out. That's not necessarily surprising, but we can eliminate them mm-hmm. from college football playoff contention. Yeah, the big TCU's out. Baylor had a chance, but then they go and they lose out West Virginia. Maybe if Baylor had run the table, you're talking about an undefeated Big 12 team. Maybe they get in. They lose to West Virginia. They're out. Texas Tech, of course, has two losses now. Right. The biggest thing TCU's is- got the loss to Iowa State. It's over. Yeah. It's over. The biggest thing that we can hope for is that SMU makes it to a, a New Year's Six Bowl. They either get in the Cotton Bowl or is it – what's the other one that's not a playoff this year? I don't remember. But – that's that's what you hope for, like how Memphis made it in there last year. That's all that you can hope for at this right. point. That's that's the pinnacle. Yeah, that, yeah. At this point, we're talking about New Year's Six Bowls. Right. That's what we're hoping for. But the the college football playoff for the state of Texas is done. It's over. It's finished. There are teams that I would like to see. I would like to see SMU run the table and go twelve and zero, and or I, twelve and zero, maybe eleven. I don't know how many games they have on their schedule. I'd love to see them go go undefeated. But no. And thought number three. Defense is dazzle. I thought, actually, one of the big takeaways from the Texas high school football um, games this weekend was I came away really impressed with a number of defenses. I came away really impressed with DeSoto's defense. They pitch a shutout on Judson for the first time since 2005. Judson had not been shut out since 2005. Shirts Clemens goes to San Angelo Central and shuts out San Angelo Central. I think that was on the road. For the first time since 2008. They had been shot since 2008. I thought that Duncanville in their debut looked really, really good defensively. Mm-hmm. I thought that Manville looked really good defensively. I thought there were a number of big-time contenders. Carthage, we mentioned them in, in the other going. I am. I was really impressed with the defense that you saw from a number of teams across the state. And no, normally that's not necessarily a surprise. Because defenses tend to be ahead of the offenses. But yeah, extremely, extremely impressive from the defensive perspective. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker for Tomball Memorial running back Richard Rodriguez. He carried the ball 26 times for 239 yards and four touchdowns. Also caught a pass for 42 yards. A helmet sticker for Tomball Memorial running back Richard Rodriguez. A helmet sticker! Sweet, sweet cover For our boy. sweet, sweet cover boy, Shane <laughs> Bouchelle. He throws for 474 and three touchdowns and SMU's big win over Memphis. And a helmet sticker. I love this. To the Allen student section. Great work. Did Great you see? Great did, work. So Pickle. I tweeted it out. Pickle was at the game on on, on Friday, the mm-hmm. uh, the uh, Allen's win over Atascacita. And you took a picture of their student section. Yeah. And here's the thing. Allen is the biggest school in the state. They have 6,900 kids, mm-hmm. right? They should be the worst at this. Yes. Instead, you were there. And they were awesome. Ev- everything about that stadium, but specifically the student section, they were all six feet apart, all of them, every single one of them. Not a single person was standing next to each other. It was awesome. Yes. So good. It was. The whole stadium looked great, too. So here's they what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Boundaries. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to trash schools that are not abiding by uh, by the uh, social distancing guidelines and the mask uh, mandate. Although I see you. I'm not going to trash you. That's fine. Whatever. You know. Let God sort them out. But what I'm saying mm-hmm. is that we will praise people who do good work. Mm-hmm. And Allen student section, thumbs up. Good job, Eagle student section. Three teams to worry about. Let's worry a little bit about Barbers Hill. This was kind of a team that was a little bit of a sleeper for us. Mm-hmm. Um, that we were, we were, uh, we, we thought, okay, this is a team that that maybe could be uh, one of those teams that, that breaks in and, and contends there in five A. They're off to an zero and two start. They've lost two games by a combined four, uh, f- you know, five points. So I'm not really worried. And they're against two good quality squads in Katie Pato and Port Arthur Memorial. But they are zero and two. 
They are 0-2, and I did not necessarily see that coming. I thought they were favored in both those games. I'm a little bit worried about Barbers Hill. Let's worry about Texas Tech. Dude. Who goes, uh, and now part of it is that Alan Bowman got knocked out. That Alan Bowman gets sucks. hurt. But a, a road game you probably should have won. Mm -hmm. And now, like, we're just, I don't know what this team is. And it's, it's a little disappointing that in a second year under Matt Wells, they look like this. So, a little worried about them. And you mentioned it on the show on Friday. Blum. Our sweet Blum Bobcats. They lose to Abbott. Um, and they are 2-3 and three now in the year. Yeah, heading into district after Heading into this. district play. I think they'll make the playoffs. Right. But this is the defending 1A Division One state champions. And right now, they, they, they are a little bit out of sorts. Mm -hmm. They give up 72. They give up a huge game to Caden Johnson for Abbott. Um, which is, you know, Caden Johnson's been doing that to a lot of people. But... A uh, little bit worried about Blum. Three teams to watch. How about Hawkins? Okay? If you're thinking, what's Hawkins? Hawkins finishes off. They beat Beckville 32-6 to to improve to 6-0. and They just clinched their first winning season since 2010. Very good, Hawkins. The Hawks, under Coach Scott Evans, are 6-0. and Keep an eye on them. TCU, you know, I sat here on free money on Friday, or Thursday, rather, and I told you, I believe in the Gary Patterson bounce back. And that's what you saw, the Gary Patterson bounce back. I think that's what happens whenever you let Max Duggan kind of cook, let him cook a little bit. He was impressive. I thought he was impressive. Um, defense made plays when they needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas spit the bit a little bit, but TCU was right there to pick it up. I thought TCU, team to watch. And finally... San Antonio Johnson. Um, this was a team in Johnson that we um, we were excited to see finally take the field. They had a big game against O'Connor, and they looked the part in their big win. Uh, they go and beat them 35-21. Uh, very impressed with the Jaguars uh, with their win over O'Connor. Keep an eye on them as they now head directly into district play. Look, they're going to be favored in the next few games. They get a big game on the 22nd against San Antonio Brandeis. That'll be a big measuring stick. But keep an eye on San Antonio Johnson. That is three teams to watch. That is Monday Morning Fallout.